Welcome to the Podness with Face, Pat, and Tiz. What's up, guys? Welcome to The Partners, a show with mm. friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. And as always, I am one third of The Partners. It's your boy, Tiz, and I'm along with the other third of The Partners. It's the Padawan here and super long extended pause tonight because um, unfortunately, Pat, uh, Face is not with us tonight. Uh, he's feeling under the weather, so get well soon, Face. Um, but he will be back with us next week. Um, so, you know, send your prayers and your good vibes out to my brother. Um, and we hope a speedy recovery to the bro. Um, but yeah, yeah, so we back, though. Episode 62, me and Pat in the building. What's good, Pat? How you doing this week, man? Oh, it's the start of the week, but yeah, it's 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 been a busy week already. But there's stuff I need to get done anyway, so it's a good week. We're gonna right. just say it's a good week. Right on, right on. Yeah, uh, my week is a little weird. I got surgery on Thursday coming up, so your boy is a little little nervous. But we gonna rock out. You know, we gonna make it happen, and um, we gonna stay positive. Uh, it's been a rough one, man. I have been really in a lot of pain this week um so uh yeah it's been a rough one man the book the boy that missed work twice um trying to go tomorrow i'm praying that i can hold it together enough to make it through tomorrow and at least half the day thursday to until it's time for me to go to my surgery so we pushing through man we we just persevering this week but we're gonna make it on through we're gonna get this uh we're gonna talk this shit tonight and uh it's gonna be all right, man. And um, my body's feeling toxic, but uh, my first topic of the night is actually about toxicity, man. Um, so the premise of this, or or the setup, I say, to kind of give you the context of, as to how I got to this, Pat. Um, I was on these YouTube streets and ran into a random chat of a a, a queen that. Uh, was in a lot of the chats that I was in formerly. You know, I, I kind of have left pretty much every chat that was of the Umar sector. And I didn't even know this person had a page, right? But, you know, shit popped up on my timeline. So I checked it out, you know, went through to support the queen. And they were talking about uh, another content creator. And some it was like an old story, but it was basically about him doing some um, groping of young ladies or whatever, right? And them kind of like being against it or whatever but in the context of the situation it got me to thinking of like back in the day when i was young when we were back in you know in in, uh 17 18 19 20 21 even you know i'm saying days um i think of a lot of shit that would be considered toxic now that i didn't know was toxic then that it was just like part of the general culture like it was just what people were doing it was considered cool like you know what I mean mm-hmm. so it got me to thinking man and I was wondering like what what is something what's like the most toxic thing or things that you did as a young man to a woman and, and I'm talking about in like a male female context um that you would never do now as an older man um and I'll start it off just to kind of give you time to think and process but um I know for me one of the big things that I I now look back on and is like disgusted at myself is a uh, when we used to be at like parties or like even at a club or whatever and you be you know what i'm saying in the midst mm-hmm. of in the midst of the ladies you know what i mean and you might be dancing with them or whatever and i remember like i'd get the rubbing and fondling and and you know <laughs> like and it was like it seemed like they liked it 
and they might have liked it, but knowing now how a woman might feel in that situation, I now know, okay, a woman might have acted like they liked it just because they were so uncomfortable and they ain't know how to say no. Mm -hmm. I just went along with it. You know what I'm saying? But like, I never, it was never like you asked for consent or nothing. It was more like, oh, this a vibe. Everybody feeling, it. oh, she's dancing on me. Oh, get my feels in. And, and it wasn't mm -hmm. like, you didn't think of it like that then, but now like, hearing a lot of women's stories and just understanding more from the a female perspective of like what they're thinking in those moments. Like I wouldn't dare do that now. Like, and I look back with disgust at myself, but it's like, I wonder like, I wonder like how, like, like, do you have any of those things or am I tripping? Like, do you understand yeah. what I'm saying? Like no, no, it's like, it's like things of when you was a young man, like things that you might have, you might have did, but now, like, oh hell no, I would never. Um, it's it's confusing, my young years, because I I I traveled the thin line rope of um, ladies, man, and simp at the same <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> Let's be real. All right, okay. I was way too nice. And then I would try to hang too hard or whatever. And things is like, all right, you got that party culture. And I grew up around nothing but women or whatever. So I would see things and I would be like, I would see guys get away with, but I'm like, you know what? If I would have did that, I don't think I would have got away with it or whatever. So I get into the mode of just doing stuff to see if I could get away with it just because I see everybody else get away with it. Right, right. And that's not it. And to tell you the truth, that's not even the most toxic thing. The, the, the God honest with you. And it's, 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 it's always a stream. I'm either going to be complete Jesus and, and, and nice and, and goody two shoes pat, or it's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be a, a toxic one, <laughs> pretty much. And uh, yeah, you have situations where, you know, there's you know, two girls like you and, uh, you you randomly get on an adventure one day and uh you know one girl is not like that or whatever and uh and you, know, you chill with both of them at the same time and uh you fuck one of them while the other one's there and you <laughs> yeah and yeah. and you get into it thinking you know this is all right maybe this is what they're supposed to do but at the same time it's, the other girl's not really into it that might be a bit toxic that might be putting a lot of pressure onto it. Or whatever, and luckily we've talked about it before, so numerous times, and I probably got fussed out a couple of times about it too. But everything's cool now, or whatever. But like I said, you get in that mindset, you see other people, they're getting girls, and they're doing stuff that if the average everyday person do it, they might get slapped. You know, like, like how to say, um, it's harassment if the girl don't like. It. If the girl like you, it's flirting. And that's that that thin line you end up traveling sometimes, like. But I, I think the thing that worries me or like saddens me about like the, the behaviors I display was like, even if the girl liked me, right? The fact that there was no consent really, it was just kind of me moving off of what I wanted to do. Like now women would consider that like, I. I overstepped my bounds because I didn't ask for consent. So I, I didn't give her the chance to exercise her power. Mm -hmm. I just kind of mm -hmm. moved in and forced her into a situation before she could say no, yes, nothing. She I just had yeah. to kind of deal with it. You know what I mean? So I think that that's the part that like I'm disgusted with it now. Like, you know what I'm saying? Being, being with my wife for, you know, damn, going on 16 years and, you know, being married to her for now, you know, going on eight, like, I look at it like, damn, if somebody did that to my wife back then when I when we were just boyfriend and girlfriend, like I'd be ready to fuck them up. But before I got with her, I, as a single man, that was my normal MO at a party. So it's like, I, it, I don't know. I, I just feel like, I wonder, like, I wonder how many dudes out there it is that like, 
they've grown now and they've evolved and they've like learned. So they're they're they wouldn't dare do these things now. But I wonder how many dudes would get canceled if their former self were present right now. Like, would their former self get canceled? Man, I think mine would, yo. Like, sadly, as much as I've evolved, like. There was a dark time in my life where I was not so conscious and not so understanding of like the other sex's perspective. The, the, the thing about it, society at that time was way different than now. So like even it, it, it's, it was probably an extreme in some cases that some women they wouldn't even know how to feel to express it at that time at certain extremes. Not not to say like everything we did was like just trash or whatever, but like at the same time, I don't know. It's just a whole different culture now. Like we, like partying then is kind of like you were in the culture and you kind of like accepted the things that were going on at that time or whatever right now. But you can't do that now because like if you go to a club now, you barely see people dancing or doing half the stuff they will be doing at the, at the party because people are afraid to do it, you know what I'm saying, with good reason. You, you know what I'm saying, like, just for good reason. I think I think I was, I think I was shook on the Me Too movement before it was even a movement. Like, I just felt like, yeah. But like, at the same time, you know, you had them hormones, you just, you just try stuff just to see, all right, because you want that little bit of attention that you never had before, you know? What was it that woke you up or, like, got you to the point where, like, all of those behaviors of even seeing somebody else doing it and, like, kind of falling into that culture? Like, what was it that stopped you? Because I know what it was that, like, kind of woke me up and was like, okay, yo, I'm wild. I shouldn't have done that. Like, that was not cool. Like, what was it that kind of woke you up? Um... I would say it's a couple of times I've tried to do something and it just didn't go the way it was expected, pretty much. When you get hit with that a couple of times and then it's just, oh no, in my, in my nature or whatever, it just seems like as you get older, the way the world seems to get wilder and wilder and out in the open or whatever. And then I start start looking at stuff, start judging stuff. And then in the back of my head, some random memory pop in my head. And I'm like, you can't, you can't, you can't judge, man, because y'all, you were doing some wild shit. You were doing some wild shit. Like, and to tell you the truth, I feel like it probably happened like in my 20s and 30s, like my late 20s. 30s or whatever like right when you about to hit 30s i was like all right i'm just around here just chasing and acting a fool or whatever but i need to worry about myself (laughs) pretty much i need to get my shit together or whatever then once you get to that i think once i had that euphoria fear um not that what, what is it called the epiphany feeling or whatever of like yeah, this shit ain't right. I need to get my shit together. I started to think about every bullshit and, and fuckery that I did myself. Right. So I think it was around that time. For me, I think it was uh, actually, it was like maybe a year after I got with uh, my now wife. Uh, we were talking and, you know, like obviously, uh, y'all know my story. Um, I am a victim or a uh, survivor I should say of like I was molested as a child by a woman and I happened to be with a partner that could empathize with that very well so we was talking about stuff and and talking about it like I had never like I had only really told like like face knew and that was really probably it for a year you know what I'm saying and Mm -hmm. Because of that, though, like, it really did change the way I saw women. So I was, a lot of my while and now was due to me not understanding women in the correct way sexually. But then mm-hmm. my wife, like, she taught me, like, kind of through her experience and, like, just through the conversations we had, that, like, yo, you've been 
that was abuse. Like you were not supposed to have been exposed to that. That early. like that was not okay. Like, and then when for some reason in that conversation after like her putting it in that perspective for the first time for me, and it wasn't like oh that's cool that you was a young dude that had this older girl do that to you. Like no, that wasn't okay. Like that shouldn't have happened. Like <laughs> mm-hmm. you weren't supposed to. Like that's not being cool. That was a woman taking advantage of you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. When she put that in that perspective, then I started thinking about like all of the women that like I had done that to. And even though they weren't like children, they were still in that same position. And for some reason, it just put that in a whole new context for me. Like, oh shit. Like it's basically the same thing. Like, like I'm doing something to them that they didn't necessarily want to happen. And even if it does mm-hmm. feel good, it, it was unwanted. So yeah, after, initiated. after that feeling, they got to then deal with the emotions of that and like come to grips with like whatever that does for them. You know what I'm saying? So like, and I, I skip on off about my business, but they still got to live with that. So like, I think that's what put it in the perspective for me. And it just got me to think, I, I don't know. It, it ain't really no topic that really go anywhere. I, I guess I don't really have no point to make other than like, don't be a fuck boy like I was. <laughs> If you are a dude out there that's like kind of going along with that that culture, dude, like I, I get it and I understand where it comes from, but like understand that it's not right. And even if a woman is kind of like into you or she's going along with it in that moment, like if she ain't consent to it or like I would I would almost venture to say that it's best to just let the woman kind of initiate a lot of that stuff, like. Like, make it known that you're down for it, but don't you initiate the touch part. Like, let her kind of break that barrier so that way she's leading in a place that she's comfortable. Because let's face <laughs> excuse me. Because let's face it, man, like, we're going to be comfortable with it anyway. Like, it's not much mm-hmm. in, as far as the initiation of sex, as far as, like, you know, the, the kissing, the touching, the fondling part that we're going to be like, oh, no, we're not ready for that. So, like, since we're going to be more prepared for it, like kind of let the woman initiate those things and, and just kind of follow her lead as far as that go. And then if she expresses to you that she's cool with you, then take a charge, then do that. But be careful to, to, to hit them checkpoints of consent, man. Like, cause that shit is, you, you know, what? a lot of us dudes that's in my, in our age range that, that mid, 30s to early 40s age range like we grew up in a culture that was like we were growing and a lot of us have grown a long way since we were younger but we did have those toxic ways so I want to just make sure that like if there are some young men out here now that's kind of following in those footsteps like that they can at least hear like from somebody who's been there like hey don't be like me looking back and regretting it just go ahead and take the cues now learn from a dude like me who's made the mistakes and just pause keep your hands in your whatever else to yourself and let the woman kind of initiate the physical pieces roll with it and and you know what i'm saying that don't mean you can't assert your dominance once you get to certain parts and she's consented to certain things but like allow her to get that chance to like assert her power and give that consent and allow you to do that to her, not you just be a caveman and a, and a knucklehead. Man. I got, I got something to add. From that. We better. I got, a, I got something to add in the perspective to add to it because I think I had, I think another thing that happened to me is that, um, all right, guys do everything to say, but there is some times where you might not go with it. The girl might be feeling you but you not feeling her like that or whatever. And I've had times like that and I rolled with it and I didn't like it afterwards. Like I didn't like it afterwards. I just felt like, all right, I'm just doing this because I don't know when the next time I'm gonna have sex and I'm not even really like her or whatever. But just because, just because I didn't want her to feel some type of way I just went with it. And then when I, when that happened to me and I started thinking about it, I was like, there's probably a lot of women that's in that same position way more than I have been. 
So definitely, if you're not feeling comfortable, don't do it. Because now I got to the point where I have I told girls that were into me that no, not to say I'm El Casanova and shit like that. I'm just getting them all the time or whatever. But you know, you you, you look at somebody and you kind of know that where it's going or or whatever. Like, yep. all right, you you might like the image of me, but if you when you really get to know me, you're probably gonna think I'm a goofball. <laughs> Or, or what, what has been presented so far, but you don't know the whole pack. You don't know everything. You don't know everything you got to deal with, pretty much, or whatever. So, and then and you have some cases or whatever, like no one understands he, him but these women. Hey, you, you may have situations where, like, all right, you might be into me, but in some cases, I might be an asshole to you. Just cause, just cause, like, like I don't know. I have some insensitive moments, right? Sometimes, I like people care about certain things, and for some reason in my head, I can't fathom why they care. <laughs> and I try my hardest to fake like I care, but I don't. <laughs> but I don't. I can't wait. So. To- Next week for against the grain because my against the grain is very similar to that. Like I feel you, I understand. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's it's definitely definitely make the woman feel comfortable, but also feel comfortable with yourself. That's basically all I'm saying. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. Um. So the moral of this story is: make sure that you are comfortable. Make sure the woman is comfortable, and always make sure that you both have consent. Like. No means no. And silence is not consent. Consent is consent. So don't take somebody just being quiet or them just kind of going along with the flow as them being like okay with it. That may just mm-hmm. be them being very uncomfortable with things and them not knowing how to say no in that moment. So like check in with people that you're being intimate with and, and you know what I'm saying make sure that they're okay with with whatever is going down. So uh yeah, man. I can't even get into it if they if she's not into it. Right. Exactly. It just feels awkward. Indeed. But yeah, man, um, that's all I have for, for my uh topic this week, man. I, I, that conversation just really sparked my uh brain and I just started thinking about like, but well, damn, where they going in on this dude, like. It's a lot of shit that I did that was toxic, like, and maybe not to in the same way, because I the context of what they were explaining for him is not the same context that I was doing it in, but it's the same end result. It's the same impact. It's the same uh, culture of like male dominance type of like I'm in a position of power, so I'm exercising that power because I'm the popular dude or I'm the cool dude or because you like me or because whatever the case, you know what I mean? So, I, I, yeah. yeah. Don't be that. Men, we are better than that. And young men, like, if you are in that scene and you are in a culture that, like, perpetuates, like, you doing that to women, like, know now so that you're not an older man later looking back with regret, like, just... It's all right to step up and be like, yo, I, I be a cool dude to the women. Like, it'll get you more women and it'll leave you with less regret. So, yeah. Word, word, wise words from the partners, man, it's from, from dudes that they made the mistakes that you don't have to. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, I guess uh, enough talking about uh, my fuckery. Let's go ahead and uh, I think it's about that time, bro. Brody. Might as well be that time. Wait, is this episode six two? Ep- yep, episode six, six two. two. Six two. That's a tall motherfucking episode. <laughs> <laughs> a tall motherfucking episode. But yeah, to get right into it. Time for me to randomly screen the title of this segment. Good and fucker. Hey. <laughs> 
Good and fucking bad. Right <laughs> yeah, yes, sir. We back. Yeah. Hit me with the night at the Roxbury music. <laughs> copyright free, baby. That copyright free. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna get into it. Nothing says uh, nothing says fuckery like rumors. So I'm gonna get into this rumor now. Out of all the MCU movies, I am more excited for it. It's it's the multiverse of madness because I just feel yeah. like yeah. it's the next end game. And these rumors that they say, it's like it's too good to be true. But if it was in it, it makes sense. It makes all the sense in the world or whatever. So the rumors are that it's going to be a lot of um, characters from previous Marvel movies and Fox movies and Sony movies that's going to be in the multiverse of madness or whatever. Um, Some of them is... Ian McKellen as Magneto, the old Magneto. That's one of them. From the X-Men movie. From the X-Men, the original Magneto, pretty okay. much. I'll take that. Yeah. Now, like, along with that. Is he gonna be and he's gonna be playing Magneto? He's playing Magneto. That's the rumor. Um along with that, you know, you have I, I said it before, they say Professor X, the Wolverine's gonna be in it. Uh Hugh Jackman Wolverine. And they, there's also murmurs of um, uh, Halle Berry storm in it. No, I'm not really no caring too much about that. No, yeah, no. Uh, please God, there's, no. there's Sophie Turner, God. the one that's please no. <laughs> hey God, there's, God, there's God. Sophie Turner. That she played Jean Grey in the last two um, X Men movies. Not really too. She played like the Phoenix. Nah, a, yeah, she played Jean Grey, you know, Phoenix. And I don't know, Jean Grey has always been the damsel in distress character. So I never really cared <laughs> too much about her or whatever. Um, and the Professor X is Patrick Stewart. It's going to be the Patrick Stewart Professor X. Uh, I'm with that. So, you know, mm-hmm. I, I like that professor. Now, the one, the other rumor that I feel like should probably be in the movie anyway, just because of his show setting up everything in the multiverse, is um, Loki, Tom Hiddleston, which is which is a given. He's already in the universe or multi other verses right now. So, yeah, that's okay. They also say um, Gamora is going to be in it also. Uh, one obscure one that I wasn't expecting was Nicolas Cage as Ghost Rider. Okay. <laughs> I, now, I actually liked him as Ghost Rider, though, so I'm not mad. Yeah, I liked, I, I liked him as Ghost Rider. I can, I can tolerate that as Ghost Rider. Um, much. The, um, the original Cyclops. He's planning on being into it, uh, being in it also. Uh, anybody else? Tom, uh, Toby Maguire again as Spider Man. Hey, okay, what did Pretty he to do? Hmm? Didn't they just wrap up his little stuff? Man, <laughs> it, it would be what he's going to do is bring the kids in because kids love Spider Man because Spider Man is the Mickey Mouse of Marvel. That's a money grab cameo because I'm like, I'm like, we just mm-hmm. Saw- mm-hmm. We- mm-hmm. it's a money grab. It's a money grab. I and I- saw you. Hmm? And no, these 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 are all these are all rumors. Now some of these I feel like make sense or whatever. And you know, as we get closer to the movie or whatever, they're gonna be throwing a lot of it out. And I feel like you know. Um, Andrew Garfield Spider-Man was we didn't know if he was really coming or not in the movie until he took the mask off in the movie pretty much it showed up so it could be the same for this I haven't seen the Spider-Man so I don't know 
Mm. So um, we got that. Now the biggest surprise, well, let me throw this, the one that played the girl version of Loki in the Loki series, she's also planning to be in it, but I can see that as far as the multiverse. She was, she was good. Mm -hmm. Now the two that threw me off really well this this first one ain't gonna throw me off but deadpool deadpool's planning on being in it Ooh. i feel like he's gonna end up being probably in like a post-credit scene or something like that okay <laughs> if, if, yeah. if, if anything but it would be less than for such a serious movie especially when the, the director of the movie said that this is going to be a scary the, the first scary marvel movie Hmm. But yeah, I mean, I still see, I can see how he fits in because he breaks the fourth wall. And I, like I said, I feel like if anything, he's probably going to sneak in at the last minute or post credits pretty much. Yeah, I can't see him having a big role just because, again, if it's going to be more of a serious, serious tone, I don't see him popping in and making jokes in that fit mm -hmm. thematically. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Now, um, what's this dude's name? Uh, remember, uh, his name? John Kravatsky, I believe his name. He was in the office. Krasinski. Krasinski, yes. Mm -hmm. Krasinski, he was in the office. They're looking at him to play Reed Richards. Okay. That's fantastic. And I can see that, you know. He got a, he, I've, I've seen like artists online do they like it's versions of them. So I can see that. Like the little street, yeah, he fit. Mm -hmm. Now, what this last rumor, like it's one of those that's like, if they can pull this off, this is awesome. But this just seems like somebody just threw this out there. But they're planning on having Iron Man back, a variant of Iron Man. So okay, won't be... like how you gonna have Iron Man back? Yes, it's a variant of Iron Man, but it is not gonna be Robert Downey playing. Who's it gonna be? Tom Cruise. They're they're planning on having Tom Cruise as a variant of Iron Man in this, and I'm like, it could work. But I don't like Tom. This, um yeah, I'm not the biggest Tom Cruise fan. Like I don't I don't see he not loose enough for him to be Tony Starks for me. I don't I don't or whatever. Like, I can see Tom Cruise more as Bruce Wayne than Tony Starks. Yes. If anything. If yeah. anything. I mean, I mean, in all actuality, Tony Starks is rich, drunk. Well, Bruce Wayne's already drunk, but he's really just drunk and wise cracking Playboy Bruce Wayne. Yeah, like, I, but even more smarter, like way broken, smarter. Robert Downey might have broken Iron Man for any other actor. Like, mm -hmm. It might really be hard for another actor to come in and do anything with that role now, just because he did it so well. And that's why I say that rumor is a toss up because. Yeah, I'm not sure unless he's just now. I could say there are different versions of Iron Man. He could be they have Iron Man where he created this suit. Um, it's like the superior Iron Man suit, and it corrupted him or whatever, or made him way more serious or whatever. Like they got like you know have like a darn, but. Uh, I just don't see it. I just don't see it. I'm good, man. I don't see it. I don't want to ruin it, man. I hope that one is just a rumor. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. But yeah, that's all the rumors for it said the uh, Multiverse of Madness. I'm excited. Not the strange. But yeah, either way, either way, I'm, I'm like excited for the movie because I just don't know what to expect, pretty much. That just be good. The, the title alone, multiverse, the title alone, just like, yeah, you just don't know what to expect with a multiverse anyway. So, um, 
other rumors that's in the movie world. Uh, is Idris Elba going to be the new Bond or not? I don't know. It is, it's gotten to the point that the pro- executive producers of the Bond series is eyeing him down to be the next one. He's on the short list, they say, to be the next James Bond. And they've, they've been like, the internets, the internets have been at it for the past 10 years for this man to be James Bond. And I'm at the point that I would say, I, I just wanted to hurry up and happen so we can, I can stop hearing the internet. You see, that I wanted to happen. And then, <laughs> and, and then it's like, yeah, this is what I hate. Like, in a, the internet, <laughs> the internet, they put up a rumor. Man, man, what the hell? The internet keep putting up a rumor, and they 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 put it in blogs like it's an actual news story or whatever, and they just push it and push it and push it, and and in some cases it works out. Um, in the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, it worked out when they first show, uh, showed Sonic and nobody liked what it looked like because it didn't look like Sonic. They adjusted that shit real quick. Yes, yeah, that out. That's the only good thing about Hollywood these days or whatever. Would the internet say, hey, that shit look like trash? They adjust that shit real quick. But sometimes that could be, that could backfire. But I don't think it's going to backfire with Idris Alba. Idris Alba is just a good actor, period. In general, like he's British Denzel Washington. <laughs> pretty much, like, <laughs> pretty much he is. Like, so. He fits. He fits the mode. I feel like he'll be the tallest freaking James Bond I've ever seen. <laughs> Whatever, whatnot. So, man, I I think it'll happen, man. It's it'll be like having Tiz in a suit shooting people. It'll be great. <laughs> I'll do it. Sounds like a great job. But, I'll uh, take it. Sign me up tomorrow. Tiz. I'm for it. Killer Tiz. Pow. Yeah. Better than me. Uh, now, if this was Golden Eye, I might get you. I might get you. I don't know. Face was kind of good at Golden Eye, too. And my little brother, he could be in any video game. Nah, I'm fine. I can only do good. Get that, get that Golden Gun. Get that golden gun, B. Oh man, I'm mean with a rocket launcher. <laughs> golden album, this shit back in the day. Yes, it was, man. I wish they would just go ahead and recreate it again. It don't gotta be. It could be better yeah. graphics and same. You know what I'm saying? Have though. Mm, they have. I think so. I thought I, I heard they were talking about it, but they won't necessarily. They haven't necessarily brought it out just yet. I thought it was out. I might be wrong. Mm. I don't have mm-hmm. a Nintendo product to know for sure, but I think it's out. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to go to my uh, main resources for that, and that's my brother Sean. <laughs> but between him, he'll know. But uh, um, since we're on gaming, might as well bring this up. Nas joins Google. And, and more to invest twenty million into a gaming publisher. Nas is just being a, a venture capitalist like a motherfucker. Like, is the publisher somebody that's reputable or like uh, the um, yeah they uh, pretty much uh, together the forty eight year old Google um, American venture capital firm. Oh, I'm going to butcher this. The Addressing Horowitz and League of Legends developer Riot Games. So League of Legends is like, um, I think that's more like a phone game pretty much. Then they raised raised $20 million in funding for a, a South African gaming company, Carry First. Money earned will be used to expand Carry First content portfolio and product engineering teams to grow its user base. Okay. so it's it's um i would say it's a more established gaming 
company helping out a fledgling fledgling gaming company in South Africa. I'm with it. I mean, it sound it sound legit to me, man. I'm down. All yeah. right, <laughs> cool, me. I just like I just like hearing about our, uh, I, I our rap legends that. doing things between him and him and Jay Z, man. I think I you know I think that's the next well, man. I think that's the secret beef between them two. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh okay. the most cool business move. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Well, so. I was a little behind Jigga on that one. He all had to uh, put the pedal to the metal to catch up. But I like mm-hmm. this move, though. I like this move. Well, like they come out with some dope ass games. Like, I, he might be a little behind, but he's a bit closer than a lot. A lot of rappers from that age, pretty much. And yeah, Jay, I mean, and then it's Jay. Yeah. Jay is like top of the food chain right now when it comes to. He's in a different level. Pop venture capitalist. Yeah. So, man, he can run into what? He run into NBA. <laughs> he running pretty much all the rap music. Got everything. He's like, he, 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 he a little bit of airway. He's an activist on the low. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Speaking of him, matter of fact, hey, another thing. My guy. Another thing. Speaking of him being an activist, also, he, him, him, Fat Joe, and others are backing a legislation that would change the way rappers' lyrics are used in court cases. Okay. He said, "He, uh, in his own words, we want our words to be recognized as art." I like so, that. Movie, though. I, I'm down with that. That that makes sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. Considering that, considering that there's literally hip hop police, literally. We thought it was a joke at first. We thought it was just rappers joking, but there's literally a squad that just surveys hip hop. So. Yeah, that, I I think that's a good move to just go ahead and do that. I, I would like that. That works for me. Yeah. Uh, so we had it's a Jay Z, Meek Mill, Fat Joe, Big Shine, Kelly Rowland, uh, Killer Mike. Uh, they just said Killer Mike and more. So that I'm pretty sure anybody that's like Jay Z say, "Hey, sign this," they're gonna sign it. Well, I like so, that. I, I'm I'm with that. Mm-hmm. Sign it up. Um, long. This is a long time coming too. But they've been doing this for the past, but. 20, 20, probably longer than that, probably as long as hip hop's been around for real, for real. Yeah. So that's one, that's one thing. So um, with the legalities and things like that, let's get right into the fuckery. Let's get into the fuckery. Now, uh, this fuckery that I'm going to start off with is not no fun fuckery to joke around with. It's just, oh, oh, no. It's not. It's, it's Mitch McConnell. I mean, Mitch McConnell <laughs> subconsciously snitching on himself once again or whatever. <laughs> Try to be cordial <laughs> and slip out the racism. Um, African-Americans vote as about as much as Americans. That's what he says. Say that one more. Hey, hey, he said, say that one more time, Pat. He said African Americans vote just as much as Americans. Yeah. So yeah. are we not American? If I'm not an oh. American, tell me so I can stop paying these goddamn taxes. That's uh, what I'm saying. Yeah, don't don't have me out here just paying for shit if I ain't got to now. Hold up. Am I not an American no more? No, it's it's into that that old age, um, good old boys subconscious of them of subconsciously thinking that if you're not white or white male, you're a second rate citizen in America. You're not a full American. I'm not a second rate nothing. Um I I take exception to that. I Mm -hmm. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. And if that's the case, if I'm not a full American, I'm paying taxes today. Please let me. Yeah, that's 
<laughs> let 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 me start off with that. Let me. How about if anything, you take away the rate and percentage of American I am in in my taxes. How about that? How how about you do that? Yep. Well, yep. so it's often that these these politicians, mostly Republicans, but you know the Democrats slip up a lot of times too. Um, Joe Biden, <laughs> if you don't vote for me, you're not black. Um, a lot of times they slip up and uh, they throw their they true self when they're actually trying to be what they consider nice. What they consider nice. So. I me of this, uh, this scene in a, a night in one night in Miami when uh, Jim Brown has had to do how, you know what I'm talking about, the white man house and the, like the white dude, he's buttering them all up and talking about how great of a football player he is and all that. And then he come and like, won't even let Jim Brown into his house though. Mm -hmm. uh, you just good enough to do what I need you to do. But yeah, you ain't welcome in my crib. And, and that's mm -hmm. sadly still the mentality of a lot of uh, people in power. I'm I'm waiting for Mitch McConnell to like. When is COVID gonna get him? When, when he gonna pay? like everybody else? I keep losing all these folks in my family. When he gonna, uh, you know, he in the government. He in a high seat in government. Of course, when is this over, man? Because uh, <laughs> he he in, the, he in the government, and he in the high seat in government. They're protecting him. How old is he? What? Like how many more oh. have no natural causes and just go ahead and handle it? Probably in his like 70s, 80s. Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't wish for nobody to leave this earth. But I will say, if somebody, you know, leave us a good one this time, God. You know? Yo, he is, he, <laughs> Yo, his demeanor is such a bitch ass demeanor, but he be saying the most boldest shit or whatever. Like, he gotta be. He's not a good person. That's just what yeah. it is. He's not a good person yeah. at all. He's a horrible human being. Period. And he look like a turtle. And he's so old, it looked like his skin is just not, is, is coming right off of him. It's just not fitting. It's like a, it's like that Edgar, from an Edgar from Men in Black, his face not fitting in his face, whatever. Losing that last his neck is melting. It's just building up right here at the base of his jawline. Just like a turkey neck. Yeah, it got a, a turtle neck. Yeah, that's like, that's like a walking scrotum. Oh, 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 oh. Violation. <laughs> hey, that's what he looked like. That's what he looked like. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not sorry. <laughs> Fuck you, Putin. Fuck him too. Fuck him too. Uh, more more politicians to say fuck you too. I like to say fuck you to the whole Democratic Party for not fuck doing all y'all. Y'all have no spine. No spine. How you can't pass this, man? They did. They passed this back when black folk was still getting hung, and y'all can't pass. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with y'all? What's wrong no, with y'all? Joe Biden, that that arm of extra gentleman shit around my peers bullshit is not cutting or whatever. Not cutting. And Charlemagne, you know what? Charlemagne the guy really said a lot. He did say a word when he brought this up because he said, all right, y'all always advocate for us to hit the polls, do our part at the polls. But when it's time for you to do your part, y'all lackadaisical. Y'all don't care. And then, I, I mean... And at the same time, this, we're asking a person that will never have to worry about this ever in his life, ever. He has never in his life. We had to probably even towards the end of his life. We, he has never in his life had to worry about this. Neither one of them, like him, um, what's the dude from West, the, the main reason why they didn't pass it. Um, his name is, is West Virginian. Um, Senator, I think his name is like, and they've been saying his name all through the news, and I forgot his name or whatever. But he's like the main person in Democrats that has been uh, 
disagreeing against, like overturning the filibuster so they can actually pass the voting rights. Whoever you are, you ain't shit. Oh, uh, I'm going. Whoever you are, I don't give a damn who y'all. You ain't shit. That's who y'all. You ain't shit. You bitch. And I, I, I'm. He just can't do the right thing, man. Like. It's fucking voting rights. Like everybody in this country should be able to vote if you're a legal citizen, period. Like, uh, uh, come on, bro. Like, this, this is just basic human decency, man. Like, I, we ain't, like, Why we, already, we are regressing as a, as, a, as a race, as a human race. Like, <laughs> we are regressing. We're going backwards. And, and like, why do we got to keep doing this? Is the same thing. We should have been dealt with this problem the first time in 65 or 1777 or 1492 one of them you know what I'm saying while I'm working on my dual citizenship so that this shit go to hell I can just get on the pot of here man I, it's, it's I'm getting more and more serious about it every year that goes fast like get the fuck up out of here man mm-hmm. go sell t-shirts to tourists on the beach somewhere Live in a hut. I've been told y'all my dream. I went my island to my damn self. Um, and I don't want nobody to bother me. That's why I'm gonna die right there, that island. <laughs> Leave me the fuck alone. I'm gonna find this out right now because that motherfucking name has to be said. Joe Manchin. That's his name. Joe Manchin. Joe Manchin. That's his name. Fuck of a name, man. <laughs> Joe Manchin. Ain't it all? With a name like that, you would, you could see why he don't really care too much. He probably living in a mansion somewhere. I, I do see why. I, I understand. But like, this is my thing. If I do a slack job at my job, if I decide, hey, you know what? I'm not gonna work today. Let's shut this whole shit down. I might lose my job. <laughs> right. You, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm gonna lose my job. If I'm not even good at my job, I'm gonna lose my job. These motherfuckers can suck for years and years and years and just stay up in there. Politician, being a politician is the only job where you can say fuck you to your boss. Yep. And keep your job every day. And keep it every day. And not, not only that, at the, the job where your boss keep the job, still keep the benefits of the job. Yeah, man. We as a, a people have like Stockholm syndrome and the politicians are kicking our ass and we just keep on taking it like, okay, thank you. Thank you for kicking our ass again. We appreciate it. Oh, you gonna take another right? Oh, thank you so much. Fucking ridiculous, man. Terrible. Terrible. But uh, the world we live in. The world we live it's in. The world man. we live in, man. Well, so we the yeah. we live in. And the more fuckery um, Cardi B and YouTuber Tasha K were entangled into this uh, lawsuit recently, and Cardi B has sued the YouTuber after she made malicious, quote unquote, claims about her in video. Um, so Cardi B won this lawsuit. Um, and the reason I brought this to the fuckery, I'm gonna read the article and then I'm gonna uh, bring a question to the table because I feel like it affects all YouTubers in some way or another. But on Tuesday, a federal jury awarded Cardi B close to $4 million in the libel lawsuit against Tasha K. It came one day after she was awarded nearly $1.25 million in damages in the same suit. The jury awarded the New York rapper an additional $2.8 million on Tuesday, according to New York Times. That includes $25,000 for medical expenses and roughly $1.3 million to cover Cardi B's legal fees. According to Billboard, a federal jury decided sided with the WAP rapper 29 in her lawsuit alleging that Tasha K, whose real name is Latasha Keeve, Keeve, or Keeve, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce that, but it's K-E-B-E, launched a malicious campaign to damage her reputation. The jury found that the YouTuber defamed Cardi B and awarded her more than $1 million in damages. The verdict came down after a two-week trial featuring the testimony from Cardi B and Tasha K. She was found liable for defamation and two other forms of wrongdoing related to her YouTube videos and internet posts. Tasha K alleged, among other things, that Cardi B had contracted herpes. 
uh, Cardi B was awarded 1.2.5 million and could he potentially receive even more. Proceedings will begin on Tuesday. Da, 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 da. So yeah, so um, basically, uh, Tasha K made a bunch of videos about uh, Cardi B saying that in, when she was in her stripper days that she fucked herself with beer bottles, that she had contracted herpes, was a prostitute, had cheated on Offset, and had done hard drugs. Um, my question is, with YouTubers, you know, we as content creators, we're constantly basically making content about celebrities and other people of, of you know, yeah. of some type of reputation. Um, this lawsuit is kind of monumental just because it's the first time that a celebrity has sued a YouTuber and has won based just off of the YouTube videos and posts. Where do you think this is leading us as a, as a content creation, um, I guess, society? And like, what do you think the ramifications will look like coming from this? Like, how do you think this is going to affect YouTube? Do you think YouTube is going to come down with new restrictions, et cetera, um, based off of this lawsuit? I think YouTube is actively trying to find any type of reason to add a restriction. Because the more restrictions you have, the less money you have to pay out. Pretty much. So I, I think that one, um, two, I also feel like it all depends on how much money is backing that celebrity or whatever, and how much people are involved or whatever, and how much these entities really like that celebrity or whatever. Because it feels like Cardi B has always, every time she had to do something or some type of legality or something, that shit goes through. My yeah, mind. yeah. She 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 does seem to have a good rec track record here as far as uh mm -hmm. people taking her side in legal situations. Mm -hmm. And then and then it's the fact that she she's very open about her opinion and like everybody use her to some type of agree to portray some type of point or get some type of ratings like you know how many times, like she said something about um, what she she said something about the just COVID or uh, or is anything political or whatever, and you would just get you'll see all the politicians or all the news um, media like CNN like there's no reason why there should be a CNN um, segment about Cardi B and how the, how how she feels. Because she's not a politician. Where is Ja? <laughs> exactly. That's exactly <laughs> how it is in that book. What does Ja Rule think? <laughs> mm -hmm. This is exactly what that is or whatever. <laughs> also, I would like to say, uh, there's one thing Tasha K said, right? Uh, she, she, that, that Cardi B can't deny it. Uh, she did fuck herself with a beer bottle. And uh, that, that video is on the internet. That's on the internet. So I've seen it. I synced it. I synced it. I synced it. Hmm. it this, it, whatever to somebody, beer bottle, and they gave it to somebody. And they just drunk that shit like it was the nectar of the gods. Yes, that oh. video is out there. Let me set up. Oh. Let me shut up before I get prosecuted. But hey, whoa, you need right. to, well, you need well. to, <laughs> you need to go after the internet and tell them to get that video off of uh, <laughs> <laughs> the internet. You need to get after them. You know what I'm saying? Do you think uh, like this is the beginning of the end of like the gossip sector on YouTube? Because I feel like that's a huge sector of YouTube that is like the celebrity gossip, celebrity rumor mill um, reporting. Like that's what, like that's a big section of YouTube. Do you think this is going to be like the beginning of that section of YouTube becoming smaller or becoming harder for them? to create content on YouTube based around this uh, lawsuit or the ramifications from it? The sector is not going to go away. How many people are in the sector surviving might change. I would say because one, paparazzi has been around forever. They never got rid of them. You know what I'm saying? And that's all gossip. TMZ is making a great profit, like break great uh, amount of money just off of anything. Excuse me, I got a call. No, you fine. <laughs> oh, 
My stomach over here cramping. You good, bro? You all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pat just died right. for a second, y'all. He's back. <laughs> I'm back. Let me clean my throat. That's, I feel like I'm showing my age doing that. Oh, Go ahead, old man. Get, oh my goddamn cough drops. But anyway, really, I don't think I don't think that's going away or whatever. Because it's still a, like the gossip industry is is not an industry that was made from YouTube. It was an industry that's always been around. Tabloids been around for days. They just changed the outlets. And for one thing, YouTube is making too much money, ad money, off of these sites. So no, I don't think they're going to go away. If anything, it's going to give them, it's going to give YouTube more control over who they can pick or whatever. And who they can keep hitting with restrictions so they don't have to pay them out. And I think that's a big part of it. Um, I, I wonder, like, what, how far you people can go anymore? Like, I, 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 I actually, all right. So I had two things I wanted to say. First of all, I think you're right. I, I do think that YouTube is going to continue to add more restrictions because I do think it is a money thing for them where there were so many creators that were getting paid off of them that it mm-hmm. became like, okay, hold up, we're leaking money. Let's find a way to continue to get re- creators on here, but pay them less. Cause I do notice more shadow bands. I do notice a lot of creators who have, who might have like a hundred thousand followers, but their videos are only doing like a couple thousand views. So it's like, mm-hmm. you mean to tell me that really that many people that subscribe to them are not watching their videos at all? Like that don't make sense. So like, it tells me that there's some number finagling going on with YouTube, but I also wonder, oh, it's I also am kind of glad that Cardi B won this lawsuit because I think it forces even the gossip mills to be, do a little more due diligence. Like, if you're going to roll in that journalism lane, like, it's one thing to do what we do as a podcast. Like, if you're in a podcast lane where you are literally, you're not reporting on the news, you're more giving your take on the, the topic that that news story provides, if that makes sense. Yeah. But like when you're actually giving or reporting on personal information about somebody, like I'm hoping this makes people do their due diligence a little more where they're not just reporting stuff willy nilly. Like you can't just say anything about somebody and just make it a narrative just because you want to or just because it's going to drive clicks. Like you should have some journalistic merit behind you throwing something out there. Now, if there's a video out there, like what you just said, then you know, hey, mm, mm. fair game. Yeah, it's up there. Game on, but uh, like- I'm pretty if, sure you is easy to find. You had herpes and you ain't got that, you ain't got that- Yeah, uh, yeah you shouldn't be doing that. Verified or you telling somebody <laughs> cheating on their husband and you ain't got that verified, then that's different because now you ruining somebody's life but you have, you don't got the evidence to back it. You know what I'm saying? Like shit should be yeah. evidence-based. Like if you're gonna say something, it should be some type of evidence. Unless you are saying like, you know, I don't know what the truth is here, but on this topic, this is how I would do it in my life. Or the, using that topic as like a springboard to talk on a greater topic around that thing. But like, report on what you actually know. You know what I'm saying? That's basically what it is. Like, and I think that goes to, past just gossip and celebrity shit, but like even to the world of sports and all of that shit, like it should stay fact-based. Like a lot of times we get into this opinion thing where our opinion becomes the real narrative and you got to keep reminding people like, if it's your opinion, st- say it is that. Like, this is my opinion. I don't know this to be true. This is how I, this is what I have determined by this. But I'm like, as far as reporting shit is fact and that shit is just <clears throat> your willy-nilly discernment, like, People should be held accountable for that, man. Like the same way people should be held accountable when they do fuck shit, people who report fuck shit that ain't true should get <clears throat> accountable. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I definitely think that this I yeah. hope the turning point in that aspect. Yeah, and then I, I mean, at first I was thinking maybe she's one of them people that was saying, hey, the WAP is teaching the youth to be 
uh, holes and thoughts and whatnot and all that other stuff or whatever. But the more I looked at it, it just looked like she's just a malicious hater that just want to bring somebody down because what does her having herpes got to do with anything in in general pretty much so man you know what i yeah. noticed about a lot of people on youtube though and it ain't <laughs> nothing to do with celebrity gossip and i think a lot of people on youtube are just unhappy people yo mm -hmm. like there's there's some people who use youtube for the right reasons like i got a i got something i want to say or this is entertainment <laughs> But it's some people that it's not entertainment for them. It's really like I want to tear down other people because it makes me feel better about myself. And the attention that I get from tearing down other people makes me feel like I'm more special. Like it's a bunch of people. YouTube is like it's like high school, yo. It's like it's a bunch of people who was like not allowed to sit at the cool table. And they found a way to sit at the cool table. So they'll do anything to stay there. I've seen the oh, South Park they do episode. wild shit, like just fucked up shit to people. And it's just because I want to, please keep coming in my chat and giving me super chats. Please keep telling me how great you like my videos. Please keep giving me attention because I'm not, mm -hmm. I wouldn't get it outside of that. Like anyway. you can tell the YouTubers and the content creators and even the social media personality that was like, you've been cool your whole life. You've been mm -hmm. content with who you are before you got famous because they act different. Like there's a different, their 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 scruples are not um what is it their morals are not compromised by attention like they're not mm -hmm. willing to just do anything or say anything like they'll still think about like you know what that ain't cool let me let me not go that way. yeah let me pull back like this is not this is not me having fun now. Now this is me being, let me get the malicious part out of it. And I think that's, it's the intent. It's like, there's people out here that just is unhappy as fuck and they just want other people to be unhappy. Yeah. It's a whole, I seen a whole episode of the South Park where I think it the was man's dad or whatever. Yeah, and they got it all together and they just, like they, they'll just pick a target and everybody just pile on that target. And all of a sudden nobody likes Canada. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like, yep, that's the yep. perfect. That's exactly what it is right now. Yo. Like, it's build a up, hate build of, up your following. Yes, it's let me be <clears throat> as hateful as possible because people are thriving off of it, and that's the scary part. Like, where are we going as a society when everything now is about how mean we can be? Like, I feel like I again, I get comedy. Like, there's a place for people making social comedy and poking fun at things. But there's a difference between like, you just thinking this is funny and you like actively trying to hurt that person. Like when, when did it become like cool to just actively hurt people? Cause that it wasn't always the case. Like there was always people who were like joke and there was always trolls, but there was a time when trolls were looked down upon instead of glorified and like amplified. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, some trolls are just some, the best trolls be the most annoying people in real life. Like they're just passive aggressive, sarcastic or whatever. And I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm probably talking about myself because I'm, I say some, I am the king of sarcasm on the low. Like I, my whole job is me being sarcastic to be nice or whatever so but those those people they're like just miserable got a dark emo type mentality about themselves and then it's just like it, it's almost like the the victim becomes the bully and vice versa that creates more bullies that creates more bullies or whatever but they're all internet bullies whatever Y'all y'all better stop. I'd love to see people just chill out. Like y'all better stop, man, because we can find them IP addresses. That's Some of y'all got them VPNs that can switch stuff time, around. Like, but it used to be like, all right, people would just get mad and you might get some backlash from like people just being mad at you online. But now it's to the point like this woman just got a call for four mil. Like it, it, 
might want to chill out, y'all. I ain't, I ain't willing to lose four mil just to talk some shit online. I, hey man, if mm-hmm. I want to talk some shit that bad, I'll just hit you up and talk some shit offline. But like, especially you know, since I, I ain't never seen four mil. Like I'm, I'm, a, I, I don't mind speaking truth to power, but I ain't about to just say some wild shit just for clicks and giggles, man. Like, mm-hmm. it can't, it can't be that. Like, yeah, you saw what I did there. You like that shit? Yeah. Clicks and giggles. That was good. Man. <laughs> Giggles, baby. Clicks and giggles. God damn it. Not for clicks and giggles. I um are. <laughs> but yeah, man. Um, I definitely think that uh this is a watershed moment, and I think it's gonna be some. I don't see this being the end of it. I see this having some ramifications for other content creators that are out there that may be in that same lane or doing similar tactics to get views. So if you're a content creator who uh Ain't been creating. You just been talking shit. It might be about to be that time for you. You might have to go ahead, uh, take it all on the Patreon and hope that your following go with you. Because uh, four mil, baby. Four mil. Mm-hmm. And that was tears of fuckery <clears throat> in the good and fuckery. The good and fuckery. Good and fuckery. Yeah. Hey, hey, it was a good fuck rant. Hey, hey, it was a good fuck rant. And yeah. Tall ass episode. Episode 62. Episode 62. And um, I think that fuckery is a good place to leave off, man. Um, yeah, man. Uh it's been a week. Um, y'all gotta excuse me. I'm pushing through right now, but I'm in a lot of pain. Um, so uh I'm I'm I feel like we're gonna we're gonna just go ahead and end it here. Um, mm-hmm. Thank y'all for joining us another week. Um, do we have a black business this week, Pat? I I, I don't personally have one today. Um, uh, don't have one, but uh, I'll shout out all the ones I can remember off the top of my head. Um, oh. All these moths. Um, if you're in Hampton and you want to record or get a tat, Matriarch Gallery. Um, if you need your photos, VIP imagery, whatever. And if you need something fly. To wear in those photos, whatever, go to rtrayclothing.com. That's rtrayclothing.com. Yes. yes. rtrayclothing.com. A R T R E clothing. Face wouldn't spell clothing for you, so I'm not either. Dot com. I don't feel like it. <laughs> Trayclothing.com, the official home of all AC83 apparel and all partners' official merchandise. rtrayclothing.com. And if you want to get in touch with us outside of the podcast, how can they do that, Pat? Well, before I get into it, promo code, because he will say it, all caps, Pod Squad 83. Promo code, Pod Squad 83. It'll help you out on the Hartray uh, clothing.com. And they got afterpay. So if you don't want to pay for the whole thing at that time, you can, you can do it in four payments i just did my last fourth payment for my christmas stuff chop it up chop it up chop it up you know what i mean but but if you want to get in contact with us you put in at sign t-h-e-p-o-d-n-a-s you google us i bet you will pop up i bet you will pop up if you at sign t-h-e-p-o-d-n-a-s and you will see that pyramid we're on tiktok we're on instagram we're on twitter you know what i'm saying we're on facebook on Facebook with Tiz Face Pat, all the partners. Oh, 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 oh. yeah, you gotta put the triangle up. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Let me stop before they think I'm Illuminati. I ain't got the money yet. I ain't got the money yet. But yeah, at T H E P O D N A S, if you wanna get in contact with us. Indeed, indeed. And that's on all social media platforms, on all podcasts or platforms, and on all, 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 all YouTube and Twitch platforms. Um, and man, if you want to donate, if you want to support the podcast, if you like what you heard today, or if you have tried any of our content and it resonated with you and you want to continue to support and see us grow, please, please, please feel free to donate at Cash App, dollar sign, Podna Tiz One. That's dollar sign, P O D N A T I Z, the number one. You can also donate at buymeacoffee.com for as little as a. Um, a dollar, just go to buymeacoffee.com backslash the partners. You can also sign up for a membership there. We'll get you exclusive backstage access to us and a whole bunch of membership perks. So go check that out there and see what we got in store for you. 
Um, you can sign up and be a member for as little as $4.99 a month. Um, we also have a monthly supporter um, button on anchor.fm backslash hey. the hyphen partners. Please make sure if you are listening to the podcast, go listen to it there. If you want to watch it, watch it on YouTube. But if you're listening to the podcast, listen on anchor.fm backslash the hyphen partner. Um, you can not only become a monthly supporter there for $4.99, but you can also um, actually help us out because we get ad revenue from every time you listen there. So please help your boys out. We're trying to grow. We're trying to make this our career. So help us out, man. Let us, let, you know, help your boys out. Put their dollars in there. Put them dollars in there. Go ahead, put them dollars. Yeah, go ahead, put them dollars in there. You sitting on the couch doing nothing anyway. Go ahead, put them dollars in there. But um, <laughs> but thank y'all for joining us, man. Um, where them dollars at? On behalf of our third uh part of the triangle, the third piece of the pyramid, our boy Face, the other partner. I have been one third of the partners. Your boy Tiz. And I've been with the other third of the partners, the Padawan here. Indeed, it's man. been a great show. Yes, man. I had fun, man. And uh, next week we'll be back to 100% strength. We'll have uh, face back in the building. Check out all of our content dropping. Um, Pat is loading up videos as we speak. And I also got some stuff coming. Um, yeah, man. We're going to be hitting y'all with content on a consistent basis, like I told y'all at the top of the year. And the first of the shows, I have gotten it developed. It's going to be dropping. I'm going um, to have an announcement about that next week on the podcast. So be looking forward to that. Um, as always, man, we love y'all. Thank y'all for joining us, man. And we about to be... About to say... We love y'all. Peace, motherfucker.